What do you do when you're scared to invest in real estate? What do you do when you feel like it's gonna hold the key to your financial freedom and yet, oh my gosh, this is big stuff and I don't even know if I'm gonna make it. We're gonna cover that right now. There's no better way to tackle this conversation than a successful investor that is already dealing with some of their fear, angst, anxiety. I've got Sandra helping us out with that today, which it's like, oh, thanks, Chris, really happy to be here, right? I mean, what is this anxiety coming from? I think it's fear of making a mistake. Yeah. And actually losing money instead of making money. Yeah, and that's a very real thing when you invest in real estate or do any kind of business. And some of you might have caught Sandra on one of her last videos. We actually were updating her game plan. She started four years ago. One of her properties, she's doubled her money. Her cash flows up. You know, she's had also a couple of normal setbacks in real estate, like what happens when the property doesn't rent or when there's an unexpected repair. But overall, it's been on the up and up. And so it's like, well, I'm winning, I'm succeeding, and it's moving in the right direction, and I could even do more, but my fear, this anxiety, this fear of it's not gonna work out is holding me back. Whenever I get into a situation like this, what I like to do is identify the belief and take a look at it and really find out if it's serving. So we're gonna go on a journey together that I call Belief Breakthrough. And uh, for some of you that have been to my live events, you've seen how transformational this can be. My hope for you is that this really helps break you free from that anxiety so that you can, you can move forward powerfully and create the retirement exactly the way you want it. Okay. You ready? So, Sandra, this belief that comes up for you is, I'm afraid to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. What's the first memory that comes up for you when you look back on your life and think this thought, I'm afraid to make a mistake? I have a sense of elementary school. Okay, so something just, early childhood. Yeah, just being in school and make, you know, making a mistake and feeling really embarrassed. Yeah, I mean, you can probably identify with that. I know I can. I mean, who didn't go through elementary school having that feeling like, the teacher wants me to do this thing or my parents want me to do this or I'm feeling this peer pressure and then didn't. And if you had to kind of create even a made up context, mm -hmm. like when do you think that might have happened in elementary school? I'm sensing like third grade. <laughs> For whatever reason. For whatever it was, because I didn't like that teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not like Miss Bohannon either. Sorry, Miss <laughs> Bohannon. Um, so what went down for you? Um, I have a sense of, I remember I was wearing this dental appliance and I used to play with it in my mouth and she would call me out in front of the class and say, stop playing with that, you know? Was it like headgear no, or was it like the rubber band thingies or? On top of my teeth. Okay, so you basically yeah. had some dental treatment, you were fidgeting with it and mm -hmm. in front of the entire class she says what? Quit fidget, you know, quit playing with that in your mouth. And what did you decide about yourself in that moment that all eyes were on you, teacher called you out, you're noticing the rest of your peers are now part of this experience. What did, you, what did little Sandra decide? That I'm not good enough. Yeah. So our childhood is where anything that you struggle with today as an adult, any fear, any anxiety, any anger, anything that isn't working for you, it all has a place of origination. It all comes from somewhere. And then we have life experience that reinforces it. We don't know if this is the point of origin, but what we do know is this was one of your early childhood memories that just said, I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. And I want to ask you, is that belief serving you today? No. No, but is it showing up in your real estate? <laughs> yes. Is it showing up in the way that you're treating your portfolio? Yes. In fact, your portfolio is performing for you, yes? Yes, it is. But you're also kind of treating it like what? Like it's a noose around my neck sometimes, like it's a problem. Yeah, you're treating, you're treating what's working for you like a problem. Now, by the way, if you color your mindset, I'm not enough and I'm gonna project that out of my portfolio and look for problems, where are you gonna find if you look for problems? No problems. Yeah, and by the way, the more problems you find, how does that feel inside? Oh, it's just like it confirms what you believe. Yeah, and does it end up creating more anxiety for you or less? Absolutely. Yeah, so by the way, who's creating your anxiety? Me. A third grader trapped inside that body saying, I'm not enough and I'm looking inside my portfolio to prove that. Is that serving you? No, it is not. No, what will happen if you actually if we don't address this, what, how could this hurt your portfolio down the road? Oh, it holds me back. I know that for sure. You know, it makes me, 
makes it difficult to make decisions to go full on. Yeah, so ultimately it underrides and erodes your personal confidence, doubt creeps up. And here's the problem, if you watch the other episode, Chandra has a property that she's made 100% return on that she can sell trade for two and up her cash flow $700 a month. She's got the ability to use her home equity line to buy a couple of more properties that can increase her cash flow. She's got the ability to take a life insurance policy, buy another property. The extra $2,000 a month that you're looking for, is it within your grasp? Yes. And will it come with some risk? Yes. And will it have moments where it misbehaves? Yes. But based on what you've been seeing, overall, is it going to get you where you want to go? If I wait it out and hold on to the end, it will get me where I want to go. It'll get you where you want to go. So the only thing that's really jacking up this whole thing is this anxiety that ultimately stems from not feeling that you're good enough. Is it serving you? No. Would you like to get rid of it? Absolutely. And would you like to get rid of the limiting beliefs that are getting in your way? Because the answer is yes, it's actually, it's a beautiful process. You now know what has not been serving you. And it's time to now select something consciously that can serve you. Rather than believing you're not enough, what would serve you so much better than that? I, the thought that came to my mind is I make good informed decisions. Oh my gosh, see, now how does that feel? That's me. Does that, does that bring anxiety? No, that's no. not. No, it's the doubt that is producing the anxiety. You having confidence in your choices that you make good informed decisions. And I want to ask you, if you make a good informed decision, does it mean that your real estate will only ever only make lots of money? No. No, the reality is it's going to wake up on the wrong side of the bed one of these days and say, huh, I'm going to, I'm going to wait an extra month before I get re-rented out. Mm -hmm. And is that a bad thing? No, it is not. No, it's actually part of the what? It's part of the whole system. It's part of the whole system for making a lot of what? Yeah, a lot of money. It's, it's, it's the system for making a whole lot of money. Yeah. So go ahead and, and, and rub the money board, mm -hmm. get some, feel some good money juju I there. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> That's what we're creating here, isn't That's it? That's right. So um, let's go ahead and address this little girl here. Just imagine for a moment, I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes. I'm gonna invite you to imagine that you're in third grade. Who's your teacher's name? Mrs. Wigington. When Mrs. Wigington sees you fidgeting with your dental gear and she's about to call you out in front of the whole class. And as she does that, here comes up this feeling that you latch onto, I am not enough. But you know what in this moment, something other magical happens, something else. A person that you deeply respect shows up and gives you another choice, a different belief that you could latch onto. Who's that person that shows up for you? It's me at my highest and best self. You at your highest and best self, and what would you tell this sweet little girl that's about to believe that she's not enough? You know that you're everything that you you are meant to be and that you do a lot of great and good things. This is just a small blip. Yeah. It's just a small blip. And you already know that it means nothing. And probably that, nobody else is paying attention. Yeah, probably. Uh, so let's go ahead and step into this new belief right now in this moment, which is? I make good informed decisions. Wow. Now, how does that feel? Good. Yeah, that is shining conscious light. I can see in your eyes. Just take a moment and connect with these brilliant, beautiful people. How does that feel to believe that you make good decisions? It feels refreshing. Yeah, I, feel, I feel an instant sense of confidence. Yeah, and you are at choice whether you get to keep that with you now or whether you want to revert back to waiting for someone to pick on you and tell you that you're not enough. But instead, what can you do to reinforce this decision? What decisions do you need to be making? What decisions have been on hold that are gonna help you build that bigger, stronger, more powerful portfolio? Well, the first thing is uh, putting the Phoenix house on the market in the spring. You're ready now, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Gonna trade that for two more? Yeah, and possibly the Indiana. I know, you know you've said maybe to hold on to that, but there are some things going on, so it might be that time. might even be going on the market as well. Awesome, any other choices that you wanna make right now? Just peace. Awesome. Just choose into peace. Choose into peace. Friends, every emotion that we feel is a choice. Never use your emotions against you to sabotage your efforts. You want to be really successful in anything, whether it's real estate investing or business or marriage or whatever thing that you're focusing on. Understand that the skill set is important. Knowing what to do is important. Knowing how to do it is important. But how you feel about it is equally, if not more important. And you are ultimately at choice with the way that you feel. So for you, here's the doctor's prescription. I'm going to okay. invite you. It takes three weeks to grow your neurons. 
So I'm gonna have you grow something new, which means every day get in a peak state and every day recite, I make great, brilliant business choices. Try it on. I make great, brilliant business choices. Feel good? It does. All right, guys, let's give, let's give Sandra a huge high five, round of applause on that one. And make sure that you clean up your limiting beliefs so that they do not get in the way of the success that you've been waiting to have. And if you'd like to learn more about some of our events that we have, where you can come and experience powerful breakthroughs together, have some life-changing experiences, click the link in the description below. Me and my team will get with you at one of our fully immersive events and help you experience the life-changing effects of breakthrough.